Thank you. Got silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Walk. Look at somebody and tell them your miracle is in the making. Uh, come on, tell somebody else your, your miracle is here. It, it has arrived. Your miracle is in the making. Somebody ought to give him some crazy praise because there's an atmosphere of belief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hit somebody and sit down, tell them it's in the making. Your miracle is in the making. It's, your miracle is in the making. Your miracle is in the making. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I could stand a miracle or two. I, 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 I got a feeling that it's miracle time in here, in this hour. Is there anybody in here who could stand at least one miracle? Come on, give him some praise. It, Anybody looking for a miracle? You, you need God to do the impossible. You, tell somebody it's miracle time. It's, I believe that right now that God has already given us the power and, give, and given us the authority to, to participate in the manifestation of miracles any time we so choose to believe that it's miracle time in Christ Jesus. Anybody ready? I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure. I, I, I believe it. I, I mean, you are already proof positive that, that God is a miracle working God. Is, is, is there anybody here who would uh, really tell the truth and say that they are a miracle? Uh, look, at your, look at your neighbor and tell him you're looking at one right now. Tell him I'm a miracle. Uh, come on, that I walked in here is a miracle. That, that, that I ain't crazy right now it is a miracle. That, that my lights are still on and I'm in between right now. It, it, it's a miracle that, that my children are now behaving. Oh baby, that, that's a miracle that I didn't kill myself after the divorce. That, that's a miracle. Somebody ought to give God praise that you're a walking miracle. Hallelujah. But tell somebody you ain't seen nothing yet because God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or even imagine, according to the power that's working on the inside of you. I wish I had some folk who crawled in here because you were looking for a miracle and you believe in God is going to do the impossible and you can't wait for God to jump off in your life. I wish I had some folk in here who would give him some radical I believe praise that it's Somebody give him some running praise up in here. Some... God has said, I, I want to do a miracle to you. I, I'm going to do a miracle on you. I'm going to do miracles through you. Miracle, miracle. God says it's miracle time. It's... It's miracle time. It's, it's time for the surprises of God. For, for those events that we can't understand. That break all laws of order. It, it's time for stuff to invade your ordinary with some extraordinary. Do I have anybody who believes me in the back row? Just holler back at me, miracle time. One writer said that God dwells outside of time but he's able to interrupt time. He's able to interrupt time and interrupt space and take charge over matter, cells, and molecules and in order to interrupt it to bring his kingdom way of doing things into the ordinary stuff that the devil is doing in your life. I, see, I don't know about you, but I like it when God interrupts. Is there anybody in here who's in need of a divine interruption? How about a physical interruption? Anybody need an emotional interruption? How about a financial interruption? Somebody ought to give God praise because he's the God of the divine interruption. Somebody just holler, interrupt me, God. 
interrupt my schedule, interrupt my flow of the mundane, interrupt my craziness in my lifestyle, interrupt. Somebody how to interrupt me, God, interrupt me. You were made for miracles. That's why the enemy tries to get you to satisfy your taste for miracles by stuff that alters your state of mind because you were created for miracles, but the enemy always perverts what God has created you to do. Good God Almighty. But we're going to give the devil a ride today because it's time for you to operate in the way that you are created to operate in the first place. Don't you let the devil lie to you. I'm, I'm ordinary. I'm, I'm just regular. Ain't, ain't, ain't no miracles happen in my life. And, and I grew up in church. Let, let, let me help you. God majors in using ordinary folk, folk with a GED or no degree at all, Folks who will split a verb and dangle a participle and graduate with a PhD, thank you, JC. He will use somebody who nobody else thinks is about anything. Take you from your single parent home dwelling. Thank you from your, take you from your drug addicted mama, your incarcerated daddy, and put you on the stage of life to say, how you like me now? Look at your name and say, how you like me now? Yeah. See, see, you, you, you don't understand. In our text, there's a boy named Peter who was nothing more than a fisherman. Moreover, he was duplicitous in his thought process. He was with Jesus when it was going good. He talked bad and cut off ears. And then as soon as Jesus got crucified, he would hide and warm himself by the fire and act like he didn't know Jesus. Y'all ain't hear me up in here. But see, Jesus used a boy who was a scaredy cat to, on his first trial sermon, to get up and preach in such a way that 3,000 folks got saved during one service. Look at your neighbor and say, now that's a miracle. Here he is on the way to prayer service at the synagogue and somebody who was crippled from birth when he met Peter, y'all ain't hearing me, but after his encounter with Peter, he was jumping around, giving God praise, had never walked before. Look at somebody say, that's a miracle. Uh, what God is saying is, I am the same God who did the stuff before that I can do right now. See, this is nothing more than a New Testament repeat of an Old Testament way, Brother Glass, of God operating in the first doggone place. Y'all ain't hearing me. The same God who can say, let there be and speak something out of nothing is the same God that's doing it right now. Hear me real good. The same God who could use a backwoods boy named Ezekiel to speak to dry bones and the bones in the valley start collecting themselves is the same God who can use you to speak to your dry situation and have an oasis in the middle of a desert. The same God who could use Elijah to stretch out on a widow woman's son and say, you got to get up one time, two times, three times is the same God who can look at your dead stuff and have you stretch it. Y'all ain't hear me up in here. It ain't nothing but a continuation of what God has always done. Then came Emmanuel, God with us. OJC, y'all ain't hearing me. The same God who used Jesus to turn water into wine is the same God who's still doing miracles. The same Jesus who would heal folks with a withered hand in the synagogue. He can wither, he can really heal some withered situations up in here this morning. The same Jesus who said, Lazarus, come forth. He can bring you out. You might be tired for a while, but you're coming up out of that thing. Hit somebody and tell them, I'm coming out today. Not tomorrow, but today. I've been down too long. I'm coming up out of this thing today. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. Believe and receive it. God, tell somebody today. To Same God, the same God who was in the first century church is at 25 South Central at the 21st century church. 
God has not changed. Jesus said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same God who did miracles back then, Kashif, is the same God who can do some stuff in your life, turn your stuff right side up, flip you out from the inside out, and no nobody even recognize you when you show up because a miracle has taken place. I'm trying to get you to believe that it's miracle time. I, I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. Y'all smart. What's wrong with him? He tripping today. You don't understand. I don't like the mundane. I don't like that as usual. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the day when my most educated deacon freaks out, runs, start laying hands on folk, and folk get up out of their wheelchair. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the day when my Sunday school teacher says, we're off script today. Uh, I sense it in my spirit, and we ain't going to act spooky. I'm just going to lay hands on whoever wants to touch. And, and it ain't my hands. I'm believing that this is a point of contact, and God is about to do the miracle. Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all scared of stuff like that, because you like domestic church that you can control and get out of church with your hair still in the same place that it was when you came in but forget your hair you see you don't understand if your hair if you can forget your hair god will give you enough money to pay for you to get your hair done every day of the week you come in wreck your hair and go back and get it done again i wish i had somebody in here who is ready for some radical stuff who's tired of playing who's tired of church games who's tired of power tripping sissies in church and it's time for you to go to a level Okay, okay, can I give you some stuff for real because you're too smart for me to holler at you and then be emotional because you're intelligent, I can see. Okay, Rebbe Rev, how do you operate in miracles? I'm glad you asked. The thing you have to do is see how God operates and join him. Not how you want it to operate, but how does he operate and join him? The Bible says, Zechariah 4 and 6, you need to know this. Not by might, nor by power, son, but by his spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Look at somebody say, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Spirit. How do miracles manifest? Number one, Daniel, by his spirit. Somebody say, by his spirit. Before Peter preached his sermon, there was the spirit. Before signs and wonders by the apostles, there was the spirit. Before there, Peter and John got that boy off the floor, there was the spirit. There, there's the spirit. Ministry of miracles begins with the spirit. Look at somebody say the spirit. Look over at Luke 4. Turn quick. Come on. Let's walk a while. Luke 4 and 8. Jesus said, my ministry really kicked off after I got baptized. The heavens opened up and the spirit of God descended like a dove. His daddy cried out, this is my son. In him I am well pleased. But look what it says in Luke 4 and 18. Then, oh Jesus, he stands up in a synagogue and he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. You know, he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, even though they can physically see, I'm gonna recover their spiritual blindness. To release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Forty days and nights of praying and fasting and being in the wilderness and dealing with the devil. Being tempted but really overcoming and defeating the devil. But look what it says in Luke 4 and 14. It says that Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Somebody say the power of the Spirit. So then he went to Nazareth. He went to his hometown. And as he usually did, he went into the synagogue. He went to church. He stood up and he took the scroll and he said, uh, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And because he knew he was anointed and because he was preaching with authority like he was anointed, he ruffled the feathers of the religious folk in the synagogue and they tried to drive Jesus out of town. Y'all need to hear me up in here. Y you see, when you're anointed, you're going to upset some folk who are used to having stuff as usual. Your own spouse it will look at you and say, you need to sit down somewhere, clown. But if you know you're anointed, it's too late for them to stop you. Tell a neighbor, you should have stopped me when you had a chance. But I'm anointed now, so deal with it. 
Look at it. Look, y'all. If you look at verse 29, they tried to throw Jesus off a cliff. They got so angry at him and his anointing that they were going to throw him off a cliff. But what I like about Jesus is the word says in verse 30, 30 but he walked right through him. You know, in other words, it ain't my time yet, clown. And you can come at me, but I'm anointed. See, y'all got to learn how to stop holding court with the discontent. If jokers don't like stuff, you need to learn how to walk right through their mess. You might not like me, but I like me. You ain't got a heaven or hell to put me in. I'm anointed whether your mama like it or not. And I'm going to walk right through you because I got some stuff for me. And I got too much power to waste it on you anyway. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Jesus went. Jesus went there and anointing was on him. And, and look, at, look at the first thing. This guy starts doing after the anointing. He goes to church in verse 33. Look at what happens. Luke 4 says, in the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon. An evil spirit. He, he cried out at the top of his lungs. Ha! What do you want with us? See, the devil knows his time is limited. Uh, you just don't know it. He said, he said, have you come to destroy us? I, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. Good, good God Almighty. But look at what, look at Gail, look at what Jesus says to him. He says, be quiet. He says, come out of here. Uh, look at your name and say, tell your devils to shut up. Come on, get an attitude. You, you, if you wasn't in here, you'd say it. Come on, tell them, tell your devils to shut up. Uh, and, and tell them to come out. Good God of hey, When Jesus told them to shut up and to come out, the devil did not have a choice but to come up out of them. And when you really start walking in your authority, you ain't asking them, pretty please, devil, would you stop messing with us? Would you stop messing with our family? Oh, Lord. He go to death. Shut up and start walking in your authority. Look that devil square in the eye and tell him, shut up, be quiet, and come out. I ain't give you permission to talk. You on time out. Go back to the pit of hell from which you come from. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get to heaven up out of here because I ain't putting up with you no more. Somebody ought to give him some glory up in here. Yeah, 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 you need to understand. He doesn't preach like an educated man. That's because it's time out for sterile education where you ain't got no power to e Hear me, hear me. Jesus said, look, look, this is how the Holy Ghost work. He said, when the Spirit is on you, you are operating above your pay grade. So, so thus, thus Jesus said, I understand this, but I got to get you to understand. He said, so turn over to Acts 1. So before he ascended to the Father, Jesus gave some instructions. If you don't have a Bible, look at one with somebody because the Bible ain't rolling on me. It's in the book. Come on, look in the book so you can get it. Acts 1, if you sit next to somebody who don't have one, move and go tell somebody, I'm sitting next to you, share. Come on. He, he says in verse four of chapter one it says on one occasion while he was eating with them he gave them this command somebody say command he said don't you leave jerusalem he said but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about he said for john baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Look, look at verse 8. Uh, uh, but, but you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, uh, in Matson, in Markham, in Country Club Hills, and in the uttermost parts of the world. You'll be a credible witness when my power comes upon you because not only will you talk stuff but you'll be able to operate in power because a credible witness can tell you what they see and a credible witness can show you what they're talking about do i have when the third person of the trinity comes upon you when the paraclete comes upon you 
when the one who walks alongside you comes to you. When, when, when the spirit of truth who guides you into all truth, who does not speak on his own, but only speak what he hears. When the spirit of God who searches the very deep things of God, who knows the mind of God. When the spirit of God who dispenses all spiritual gifts from God to you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you'll have dunamis. You'll have supernatural above your natural power. You'll have a, a GED, but you'll have a PhD anointing that'll move you in the realms that you don't even know how you got this wisdom. Hey, God, y'all need to hear me up here. It is he who gives us power. So Jesus said, don't leave without your power. They used to say, Amex, don't leave home without it. No, the Holy Ghost. Don't leave home without him. Tell your neighbor, don't leave home without the Holy Ghost. Don't wait to come to church to get the Holy Ghost. You can get the Holy Ghost on the foot of your bed. You can say, Holy Ghost, I need you right now. Holy Ghost, fill me one more time. Oh, 